Melody could never tell for a fact whether her popularity at the prep was attributable to her outgoing nature, to her ravishing good looks, or to her magnetically piquant yet elusive charms. And this caused her to be inordinately suspicious of people's motivations whenever they sought her society and accounted in large part for her vigilant avoidance of eye contact in the company of strangers. A colloquial angst she had inherited from her rich and famous forebears. It was true that our heroine was graced with a lean and lithesome figure, firm, supple credentials, and deliciously smooth skin from top to toe. Moreover, she dressed with style and taste, yet wasn't unprone to a fashion risk now and then. In despite of her facile popularity at school, there were times she'd lie awake deep into the night, worrying herself silly that the stupinions she expressed on various topics and affairs were accorded more reverence than her actual conversance with the subject matter in question warranted, as she was keenly cognizant, even painfully so, of the fact that there were blocks of unbridgeable gaps in her learning. Moreover, she knew she possessed virtually no talent whatsoever, or at least she had managed to impress upon herself such an egg by beating it into her psyche day and night, for assimilating the raw facts and data necessary for succeeding in her academic studies. Melody couldn't do a crossword or sing a tune to save her life. To make matters worse, she had insuperable difficulty but thinking the consecution of key historic events. In short, she was seldom if ever able to recollect, with any degree of accuracy, the unvarnished chronologies of pivotally important genetic landmarks and the emergent cultural phenomena associated with them. She was all utterly clueless, for example, as to what came first, the Inquisition or nuclear fission, the Reformation or desegregation, Charlemagne or Mark Twain, the New Kingdom or the New Deal, the Great Schism or the Great Gatsby, the Cuban Crisis or Cubism, atom bombs or sitcoms. Because of this childish weakness, attributable more to cushioned sloth and oisivity than any lack of latent intellectual endowments. And because of all the rumble-bumble caused by competing stimuli, she felt she had no choice but to enlist the aid of professional spooks, most of whom were outsourced overseas from various high-end online custom essay writing services to research, compose, and edit her school assignments for her. 
the fact that her professors had hitherto given her imprevaricably high marks, to wit, straight A's and even A pluses, had confounded her no end, for she had been uncomfortably aware, deep within the tangled recesses of her writhing conscience, that she hadn't merited such lofty praise for her scholarly work, especially seeing as she'd never otherwise slimmed her assignments less than half-heartedly, and was for that reason omnisciently savvy now, neither to nuzzle nor to nurture any phantasmagorical illusions apropos of the unassailable indicia that the largesse of her academic output was anything more than crudely mediocre, silicit, wretchedly shoddy at best.